Well, hey guys, welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. This is my impression video of uh, overview of my own 2018 Nissan Leaf, 40 kilowatt version. It's my one year review. So if you've been following the channel, you know that I did a video when I picked up the vehicle. I did a vehicle about a uh, video about two months afterwards, and now I'm at the one year mark. So I wanted to give you guys an overview of my thoughts of the vehicle. Um, you know, to summarize, uh, the Roadshow video, and it just came out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the Roadshow guys uh, did a, a review of the Nissan Leaf as well. And I really echo um, their sentiments, basically. Um, this has been a very simple, easy, fun, reliable, quiet vehicle to drive for this whole, this past year. Um, it, it, it's exceeded my expectations, to be honest with you, from a vehicle um, I, you know, I, I kind of maybe expected some fit and finish issues as I went down, you know, got down a little bit into some of the miles. I've done over 23,000 kilometers in this vehicle in just, uh, just a tad over a year now, um, and which is a pretty good amount of driving uh, for a one year period. And uh, the car has remained flawless. Uh, basically, uh, I've, I've got you know very little negatives to say about the vehicle, and I will get into some of the, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But that's the good, really, is that it's just been reliable. It's been quiet. It's been fun to drive. Uh, it's handled all the different weather conditions that uh, Mother Nature could throw at this vehicle. Obviously, in the winter, I put a very good set of snow tires on, um, but uh, and and it's worked very, very well. Um, you know, uh, so the good is pretty well everything about this vehicle. <laughs> I have to say there's hardly, you know, if I want to get nitpicky and pick out a few negatives on the vehicle, you know, some people have complained about the instrumentation and yeah, you know, maybe it's a little dated. It looks a little old. It could use an update. I know in the E plus now it's got a little bit snappier, a little bit different color scheme and it's a little bit more updated uh, from that. But you know, it, it's worked flawlessly for me. I, ha I haven't had any issues with the instrumentation. Everything Things work well. I'm used to it. Um, you know, I've got a creature of habit. I know where controls are. I know where buttons are. Um, all that kind of stuff. The Pro Pilot has worked extremely well. And if you go check out my videos, you'll see I did a pretty comprehensive review about Nissan's uh, Pro Pilot little uh, back uh, in the fall of last year. I do use it when I'm highway driving. I don't use it in in the city at all. It's pretty well uh, just highway driving. Uh, I do like the um, ACC version of it or the uh, the smart cruise um, and of course the lane keeping works very well uh, it will navigate corners uh, turns you know slight turns um, it, you know you do have to keep keep your hands going everywhere but it works really well right so the last year folks has been really good with this uh, Nissan Leaf uh, for my first battery only electric vehicle um, I have to admit it's been just a fantastic year with this Leaf it's uh, it's just been working flawlessly uh, since I got the car. I just get in and I drive and I go and it takes me where I need to go. Um, this past year has been eventless, I guess it is the right word to use, which is a good thing. Um, the positives, so you know, I'll kind of run down through the, the good, the bad and the ugly, I guess, for this a leaf and then I'll get into some financials. It's basically been flawless, um, no squeaks, no rattles. Uh, the build workmanship is still very solid in the vehicle. I've gotten so used to driving this vehicle. I run in eco mode all the time and I use e-pedal all the time, uh, even in the winter. And in fact, there's some great benefits for winter driving as far as e-pedal goes, but um, to help you slow down in the snow, but it just, it just works. And the only, uh, I guess, negative thing I can say about e-pedal is that when, when it's cooler temperatures and you go over a bump, a fairly substantial bump, um, it tends to kind of stop the, the regenerative braking part when you're, when you're slowing down. It kind of just, you can feel that the regenerative braking shuts off and you're just on the e-pedal using the, the disc brakes uh, to slow down and stop. It's a slightly noticeable difference and you can see the regen kind of go back to or go away. That's the only thing I've noticed as far as the e-pedal functionality goes is that and it seems to only happen in the in the cooler temperatures, um, not necessarily when it's warmer. Uh, today that I'm doing this video and drive, it's uh, 18 degrees Celsius, almost 19 degrees, very pleasant day, actually getting very warm. Um, so uh, nice for this time of year in the uh, latter part of May here. Um, so that's probably the only thing that I've noticed about e-pedal. But uh, again, other than that, the car has uh, remained 
um, very stable, um, very quiet. As you can hear, um, you know, there's no bumps, there's no, there's no rattles, anything going like that. Um, it's been pretty effortless driving. I know that um, when I take people in this car, the first thing they comment is how quiet it is. Um, it's a good wind today, and um, you know we're not really hearing much wind noise out of this uh, vehicle. And I'm doing about uh, you know 40 miles an hour here on this country road, so um, it definitely keeps the noise down uh, to a really good minimum. It's got great get up and go, even in eco mode. As I've mentioned in some of my other shows, um, I don't see the need to actually not run on an eco mode. So it's got plenty of power. Again, I drive this fairly conservatively, um, not to tr not to really not waste energy, but just common sense driving. Now, I will get into, I guess, the ugly part of it, since I mentioned good, the bad, and the ugly, uh, with the bad being just, I think the only thing I can really pick out is that regenerative braking where it kind of stops uh, stops regenerative braking when you go over a bump when the temperatures are cooler. Probably the, that's the only negative thing that I've experienced in this car. And the ugly part really is winter range. Um, I wanted to go and experience what the worst outcome of range could be on this 40 kilowatt Nissan Leaf 2018. And um, when I took a trip to Windsor, I went in the middle of February where it was uh, just below um, zero degrees Celsius temperatures. And um, uh, it took me three chargers to get down there and three charges, uh, fast chargers to get back. Now, one of those chargers was not working correctly. It was uh, kind of hung up at 20 kilowatts. It was level set at 20 kilowatts. So you couldn't push anything or pull anything more out of that charger. So my, my traveling time that day um, was very long because of the multiple, because of the, the stoppages and the slower charging. Now, again, that wasn't to do anything with the leaf. Um, that was the same time that we had a massive freezing rain or ice storm here uh, in southwestern Ontario and southern Ontario. And I drove through that um, in, in the late afternoon and into the evening. And I have to say the car performed admirably. Of course, I have very good winter tires, Michelin X-Ice 3s, as I've mentioned. Um, they are great winter tires. I certainly um, recommend anybody who's going to be doing any winter driving to get winter tires. That's kind of a no-brainer because of the ice buildup. It was a very bad storm and the leaf performed admirably. I never felt unsafe at any point in time. And getting to winter range, so I mentioned that I wanted to experience the worst winter range, so I would have to say that the worst range that I've that I can predict would have been when we had temperatures in the minus 25 to between minus 25 degrees Celsius and minus 30 degrees Celsius. Um, when we had some steady temperatures at that time, I was doing some highway runs and I calculated that doing about 100 kilometers an hour, let's say 101 kilometers an hour, or you know 62 miles an hour, roughly around that. Um, I, with that temperature at a steady highway pace, I would have only achieved about between 120 and 140 kilometers um, at that pace, at that speed, had I maintained. Obviously, when you're highway driving, you're using more energy. When it's very cold like that, um, your range, it's not uncommon to see ranges uh, drop by up to 50%, and uh, which is the case uh, for the LEAF. So that would be the worst case scenario, would be, let's say, about 120 to 140 kilometers. So about, uh, you know, 80 to 90 miles, I guess, range from a, from a U.S. Um, out of the 150 EPA that it's rated for. So that would be the worst case. Um, otherwise, you know, my best range has been in the 270 kilometers uh, when I first got the car. Now, other than that, uh, I, I've done some videos in winter driving, so I don't need to comment on that. You can go back and watch that. But again, this car has been just an amazing, amazing vehicle in this first year of ownership. One thing I also wanted to mention uh, from a display is that I just recently found this. I might have knew about it before, but I probably forgot. But uh, under the nav, um, it's got something where... Um, you can, uh, I, I didn't really know that it has something along these lines. Um, uh, let me just find something here and um, see what I can do. So if I look something up here, so I've uh, looked, put a point of interest here for the nav to look something up. And one thing, I, I just usually just go press start and off I go, because I have used this. I, I use this in conjunction with my iPhone 
to uh, to get around. Uh, the nav isn't the greatest, but it's not the worst either. It actually works pretty well. But uh, I use my phone sometimes for shortcuts if I'm watch if I run into a traffic jam and need to divert. Uh, but one thing I just found out the other day is that when I go into route details, and uh, it's going to give me multiple route options for Canada's Wonderland in this case that I'm looking at from where I am. And uh, it's hard to see, but there are multiple lines that it's drawing out there. Now, if I go into more routes, uh, this is the part that I didn't even know existed. <laughs> and if I did, I probably forgot. But it actually gives me fastest uh, energy saving routes, um, minimum amount of freeway driving or shortest distance, depending on your pleasure. It gives you four options. But the key to this is the battery uh, estimation uh, that the percent of charge, state of charge that you'll have once you arrive at your destination. Uh, in this case, it's telling me I'm at 86% and if I drive these 40 kilometers or so, or in this case, uh, 40 kilometers, I'll have 65% charge remaining after that uh, because I'm, that's the fastest route, which would be all highway for, most, for pretty well all of it. Um, and obviously you're going to use more energy in highway, but this function of, as far as state of charge once you get there I didn't even know existed until literally a week or so ago when I stumbled across it and that's great And in fact, I tested it and it was bang on um, as far as the estimation So, you know, I know Tesla prides itself for having a really good estimator as far as what your state of charge will be when you get there And I believe it, fa it factors in terrain and things like that, but the Nissan one is pretty good I don't know if it factors in terrain and traffic conditions. I don't think it's that sophisticated, but I have to admit um, the couple of tests that I did of this, it was bang on the other day. And, um, and in fact, I, I took a city route, which I went through stop and go traffic. And it was exactly to um, to what it said it would be from a, an end of uh, uh, charge remaining once it got to my destination. So something if you folks that have lease haven't come across this yet, might be something to take advantage. I'm certainly going to start using this a little bit more because I just, I don't even think about it. I just see my, I go by distance basically than I do anything else. Okay, so let's look at some of the numbers here. Here's a screenshot from my Leaf Spy Pro indicating my current state of charge uh, when the gasometer shows 100% charge. As you can see, there's a difference there, and all the other stats are uh, obviously showing up on that screen. And here's another shot that shows the efficiency ratings. I'm not sure if this is a total historical screen or just over the last few sessions, but as you can see, pretty decent efficiency. This final graph is the, uh, shows the state of health of my current leaf. As you can see, it's just under 94%. Now, when I picked up the leaf, it was not at 100%. It was about at 98 point something, according to Leaf Spy Pro. So about a four to 5% drop is very normal within the first year of uh, ownership of battery electric vehicles, especially non-Teslas anyway. So I'm quite fine with uh, what I'm seeing here. Everything looks pretty good. Also, a quick comment on the number of charges. As you can see, I've done 19 rapid charges, and it shows 478 level 1, level 2s. Now, that number is a bit misleading because what happens with Leafs by Pro is it actually calculates every time you start and every time you stop a, a, a level 1 or a level 2 charge. So with most of my charging being done at home, a few freebies at some of the malls and things like that from a level 2, uh, it's actually about half that number is really the true number. So here's a yearly review of my history or statistics that I kept. And if you saw my two-month review, you saw something similar. Uh, highlight again the mileage driven, 22,615 within that one-year period. Uh, total energy that I've consumed is 3,917 kilowatt hours of energy, which, uh, as I've uh, estimated the costing breakdown before using various methods, cost me about $625. Uh, to do that total mileage, which I think is awesome because in a regular ICE vehicle, that kind of mileage would be between $2,500 and $3,000 uh, versus $625. So that is outstanding. Uh, the number that I'm very happy with is the number of uh, uh, CO2 savings, a number of kilograms that did not go into the atmosphere through greenhouse gas emissions of 4,118 kilograms of CO2 that did not go in because of driving the leaf. And there's a bunch of other numbers there that you can look at uh, in this chart that shows some energy economies and so forth. Uh, one thing I wanted to highlight is my service expenses were zero. I, I had a 12,000 kilometer checkup, which cost me nothing. And I'm due for my uh, another checkup within the next month or so. Uh, so that'll, that'll be added to my next year. 
Uh, the only expenses I had was, as I mentioned earlier, I, I purchased winter tires and then I had them put in storage and, and uh, reversed back to all seasons in April so that those are fees that I paid for uh, those particular items. And additionally, the only other unknown expense that occurred is when I had a tire puncture, ran over a nail, and I had to get that plugged, which cost me $35. Now, I've also done some total cost of ownership calculations. And before I show you my calculations, just wanted to give you an example of what depreciation can be uh, for vehicles. So I'm using these rates of about 20% depreciation for the first year in calculating my total cost of ownerships. And as I move forward, I'm using the various rates that you see here from this example. So here's my real co total cost of ownership for the first year of owning this 2018 Nissan LEAF. You can see my cost I paid for the vehicle, including any short financing interest that I occurred, my charging, insurance, and my registration tags cost to give me a subtotal. I have decreased from that the fair market value after one year of the Nissan LEAF, and I've used some various sources to calculate that fair market value. Now, everything here is in Canadian numbers, so you would have to convert that to your own local currency to make sense for you which gives me a total cost for year one of just over $8,000, almost $8,200. Uh, and when I divide that by the total kilometers driven, I get 36 uh, cents per kilometer if, that's, if I'm doing that correct um, in this case. Now it seems kind of high, but as you saw in the previous slide, uh, the average is well over 40 cents for the first year of ownership per kilometer uh, for uh, TCO. And again, remember that total cost uh, per kilometer includes the full purchase price of the vehicle um, into that number to that equation to elevate your year one cost to a higher level. And here's a summary of my projected years two to five costs for total cost of ownership. The main takeaway, it, uh, this may look kind of confusing, but I think the main takeaway is because my car is paid for, the fair market value of the vehicle does depreciate and I've got numbers of 23, 18, 4, 14, 7, and 13, 5 as a projected fair market values by the end of five years that the vehicle should be worth around $13,000. But because of the, the low uh, upfront costs, it costs me to run that vehicle every year, including uh, energy and insurance and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm in the positive equity because my car value is higher than what I owe for it and what all my total costs are. So. The main takeaway from this is two things. Um, I'm a big believer in not paying for a vehicle, overpaying for a vehicle, so running it the term of a finance, trying to pay it off as quick as possible to save yourself those interest charges that, uh, and that extra money that you would pay by financing. And that's also another reason why I had a budget and I did not purchase the Tesla Model 3 because at the time, last year when our incentives were going away, only the long range version was available and that would have cost me probably about twelve to $15,000 more, uh, maybe even $16,000 more uh, for, that, for that vehicle. And I didn't just simply just didn't have the budget for that. So, um, you know, try to pay down your vehicle as quick as you can. Any big ticket items like that, try to pay, you know, save yourself money on that. So I'm in a positive equity moving now into my second year where my expenses, my predictive expenses are going to be low and the fair market value of the car is still going to be fairly strong. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm loving the EV story from that perspective. Hey folks, now just in the last few days, I ended up adding an accessory to my Nissan Leaf, which is a trailer hitch. It's a uh, class two, class three hitch. It's a two inch receiver. Got it from a company called Torquelift Central out of the uh, US. They make a product called Eco Hitch. And if you Google uh, Nissan Leaf Eco Hitch, you'll come up with all kinds of videos and the website and more information about this. They've been making hitches for Nissan Leafs and various other vehicles for many years. These are custom uh, built uh, upon order, so it takes about two to three weeks to get basically once you order it but I ordered it through a Canadian distributor so I didn't have to worry about cross-border shipping and duties and things like that so this is a two inch receiver that I wanted to uh, that I got for this hitch the reason is I wanted to have more more load on it uh, it's rated to handle the hitch itself is rated to handle up to 350 pounds of tongue weight and I believe about 2,000 pounds of towing weight now I had somebody ask me about towing on Twitter and uh, you know what if I'm towing this I'm not personally going to tow with this vehicle but I do I have read and I do know of some people that have towed with this vehicle. 
small utility trailers or maybe a skidoo on a, on a, on a, on a trailer for the skidoo or a very light kayak or a very light small boat setup that's well under 2,000 pounds. You'll have to consult Nissan's owner guide to get towing recommendations. I won't tell you, yes, you can tow and what you can tow with this. I am telling you that I have seen people and I know of people that I have towed with this vehicle. I'm personally not interested in towing at all uh, with this vehicle, but I did want to get the two inch receiver, as I mentioned, because I wanted to have a, a bike rack that will hold up to three bikes. And when you get past two bikes, it is recommended to go to a two inch receiver, uh, a two inch size hitch versus a inch and a quarter to handle more, more tongue weight and to be stronger metal and all that good stuff. So that's what I got here. Um, and what I'll do now is I'll put on the, I'll show you the bike rack that I just picked up the other day for this as well, so that I can haul my bikes around. All right guys, so the rack that I got for this is the Yakima four-timer rack. It's a rack that actually will hold two bikes and then you can, this piece is an add-on, comes with it that you could go from two to four bikes. So it's kind of the best solution that I could find for a platform style uh, bike rack uh, with a clamp down because one of our bikes that we have is, uh, my wife said it has fenders on it, it's a cruising bike. So I couldn't get anything with a wheel mount because that's the mo most popular style of platform uh, rack uh, bike rack that's out there and I didn't want the hanging ones because I used to have one before and sometimes things would flop around so that makes racks they're all and a bunch of others as well um, that make them so just choose what you want but uh, certainly um, from my understanding with a two inch receiver uh, the class two three hitch that I have on here it'll have no problems in carrying about 90 pounds of bike weight because my most uh, heavy heaviest bike weighs about 28 pounds everything is lighter from that so about 30 pounds let's say average for the three of them 90 pounds plus some of the distance I should have no problem as long as I load it properly anyway that's my setup I had some people ask me about it so there you go to summarize the Nissan Leaf that this is this is not only a zero emission vehicle but it's a zero issue vehicle uh, from my perspective. I know that your mileage is going to vary. I have a couple of friends who have some Leafs that have had some small issues that they've taken it in to get fixed. These things do happen and these things aren't flawless but uh, for you know for my experience so far in this first year of ownership it's been fantastic and do I highly recommend this vehicle? You bet I do. In fact I recommend pretty well any battery electric vehicle that's out there in the marketplace today because they are all building with such decent quality. Um, uh, you know, I don't hear people who drive the Ionic, people who drive some of the others just love these vehicles because they just get in and go. And that's really what this vehicle is all about. So um, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed some of my financial analysis uh, of it and some of my comments. And again, as always, I'd love to hear your feedback. If you have a leaf or if you know somebody who does, let me know what their experience has been like. Certainly it's, it's going to be even better, I think, with the plus now with the higher range. That's probably the only thing I wish that this vehicle had was a bit more range in it so that I could do that city to city hopping that once in a while very, you know, a couple times a year that I need to do for work. And, uh, um, but you know, we have two other cars that we could take in the family. So uh, if this thing's a little out of reach, I just jump in one of the others and I use that for that small period of time. And then my wife or daughter drives this car, so it doesn't sit idle, that's for sure. It, it's always replacing one of our, uh, uh, one of our ICE vehicles uh, if, uh, if I'm taking one of them. So please, as always, I always love to hear your comments. If you have questions, send them to me. Thank you for all the Patreon support as well and continue to watch. And I've got some other review shows coming up. So again, until the next episode, everybody take care and we'll, I'll see you on the next time. Bye-bye. Uh, you know, every, every couple of weeks or so to get the, the salt off and the snow. But uh, beyond that, I just get in and I drive the car and then my camera falls off. Well, hey guys, welcome to this episode of the EV Revolution Show. This is my one year review of my 2018 Nissan Leaf. That guy got no brakes today.